Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite no value YouTuber, Gardner. The community has struck back against the evil Epic Empire, and this time, the best experience is through Steam. Plus, Pierre Lou hints at what's coming next for SteamOS, and it's got me super excited. And a new stable Steam client brings massive changes for Steam Deck. All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. The Unreal Tournament community started this year off with a gut punch when Epic shut off many older game servers, including several beloved Unreal Tournament games. Classic titles like Unreal Tournament Game of the Year Edition and UT 2004. The reason Epic gave was to move their online games to a new unified platform called Epic Online Services, which would have modern comforts like a unified friends system and parental controls. And since Epic recently forced the removal of the Unreal Tournament franchise off of digital storefronts, this was really only a matter of time. While some could argue that it simply wasn't feasible to continue maintaining multiplayer servers that had been up for literally decades, plural, there are better options than just unceremoniously ending support for these games. Well, the Unreal Tournament community seems to agree, and thanks to D10's fans' contribution to the Lux Torpeda compatibility tool, players can experience one of the greatest arena shooters online once again. Through Luxterpeta, the native Linux version of the game can set master servers, which are servers maintained by the community instead of by Epic, as the default servers and then restore online multiplayer functionality. Now, it is frustrating when companies don't do more to preserve their online games, especially when it seems they hold their legacy catalog in contempt like Epic does. And it's frustrating too because it could be easy for them. By either giving their loyal customers the tools to run their own custom servers, or by subsidizing the cost of maintaining the old servers until they have a modern solution. Now, from a preservation standpoint, I would definitely prefer the former, but having something would be better than nothing at this point. A decade back, Microsoft shut down the Halo 2 multiplayer servers on Xbox Live, but eventually we got the Master Chief Collection for Xbox One and PC. And while I am a fan of Halo the Master Chief Collection, uh, it's not a perfect solution. You can't play Halo 2 on your Xbox anymore. And when it came to Halo Master Chief Collection, you had to buy a whole new console and repurchase the game you already owned. What was worse was said multiplayer was botched at launch. Eventually it did get to a playable state, though we're still waiting on Easy Annie Cheat to work with the deck, and it has managed to pull in almost as many concurrent players as Halo Infinite. But still, game preservation is more important than any of these companies seem to be willing to admit. Personally, I think Epic should have, at the very least, just made the Unreal Tournament games free to download and said, hey, we're turning off the servers, I'm pretty sure you'll figure something out, here's the source code. That way, people could discover the game in the future and the community could continue playing. But now, with the games off digital storefronts, they'll have to find other, less legitimate ways of getting the game. Where there's a will, there's a way, and that's especially true for the internet. So I'm hoping that the Unreal Tournament community will continue with their custom servers long past 2023. In addition to the community restoring online multiplayer for the previously mentioned Unreal Tournament games, the community has even restored multiplayer to the pre-alpha of Unreal Tournament 4, which was abandoned by Epic long ago when Fortnite gained popularity. By using the Unreal Tournament 4 unofficial mod and the UT4 master server GitHub projects, players are able to once again take this pre-alpha back online. What's notable is that it's actually far easier to acquire a copy of the game since Epic still hosts downloads for the original installer. There's a full Full guide by Reddit user Ria987 on the Linux Gaming subreddit to get you up and running if you're interested. So are you going to be firing up Unreal Tournament anytime soon? Did you miss your chance to buy the game digitally? What other legacy titles have been pulled from storefronts that you miss? Let us know in the comments below. Now before we move on though, I want to thank this video sponsor, Micro Center. Micro Center is one of the largest consumer electronics retailers in the US. With over 30,000 products in stock, there's something for everyone. Students, IT managers, and gamers alike trust Micro Center for their computer and electronics needs. And I jump at the chance to work with Micro Center every time because they have knowledgeable staff across their 25 US stores and a terrific reputation for their sales and service. Plus, they have a great selection of laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, networking equipment, and more. And what better time to check out Micro Center than right now? Their build your own top deals promotion ends March 1st, so head over to Micro Center and find savings on your favorite PC build. You can even stack your savings by combining coupon codes. On top of already great savings, new customers this February can click the link in the description for $25 off all CPUs. Thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the show. 
All right, next up, in a recent tweet, Valve's Pierre-Lou Griffet mentioned upcoming performance improvements involving tasks that require simultaneous multi-threading to be disabled. This will be included in the Steam Deck's upcoming SteamOS 3.5 update, along with a kernel update, although Pierre-Lou did not specify which of the kernel versions we would be getting in SteamOS 3.5. Quote, there are performance improvements in the pipeline for workloads that need SMT disabled to perform well. Those are being tested now and will be released as part of the updated kernel we're working on for SteamOS 3.5. Previously, if users wanted to disable SMT for better performance in certain tasks like emulation, they had to download third-party tools like Decky Loader and Power Tools. I mainly used SMT disabling for Nintendo Switch emulation, and while Power Tools is a fantastic plugin, I'm excited about the idea of SMT toggling being baked right into the Steam Deck's quick access menu. The DEX per game power profiles is a fantastic tool to maximize performance and battery life in a set and forget kind of way. And I sometimes forget to re-enable SMT after playing a few rounds of Smash Bros Ultimate. So suffice it to say, I'm really looking forward to this feature. If you'd like to learn more about SMT disabling, YouTuber CryptoByte33 has an in-depth video about maximizing your Steam Deck's performance. In that video, he touches on SMT disabling and you'll find a link to that below. While improving performance in the latest and greatest games is all fine and good, what about some of the classics? Much like DXVK and VKD3D for translating modern implementations of Direct3D into Vulkan, D8VK aims to translate much older Direct3D 8 games to Vulkan, allowing for better compatibility for much older games on Linux. D8VK does not have a final release yet, but did have a 0.10 release back on December 6th of 2022. There's a list of working D3D8 games on its GitHub page, but the one I'm most excited about is Freelancer, as I am a huge sucker for any game that allows me to live out my Cowboy Bebop and Firefly dreams. Now this news has me pretty excited, and I want to know what you think. Are you excited about playing something like Max Payne or The Sims on your Steam Deck? Are you interested in SMT disabling in the next SteamOS release? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why haven't you liked that smash button yet? It's time. I mean, like it. Go ahead. It doesn't hurt. Plus, you'll end up seeing more content just like this when you do. You can also subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun stuff we're doing here on the channel. I'm giving away a Steam Deck at the end of the month, so make sure you get subscribed to follow that. And thanks. All right, did you hear about this? Framework will be the first to be selling two terabyte NVMe SSDs that are compatible with the Steam Deck. Now, many of the two terabyte NVMe's that you're gonna find on the market currently are the 2280 size, uh, and they're incompatible with the Steam Deck. And you might find that confusing because the Steam Deck uses the 2230 form factor. Frameworks Nerva Patel goes on to explain why this is. Quote, unlike the 2280 size M.2 SSDs that the framework laptops use, the handheld Steam Deck relies on the physically smaller but much less common 2230 format. As a result, it can be difficult to find legitimate sources for larger capacity drives like 2TB ones to load all of those games onto that you're totally going to play someday. Since we order a huge number of Western Digital drives already, it's relatively easy for us to add one more line item and stock 2TB SN740 2230 ones. Currently, you can sign up for an email notification when it comes in stock. Once it's available, you'll be able to pick one up for the not so insignificant price of $299. That's just $100 short of the Steam Deck. Uh, it's not terribly surprising though, and it's not even the first gaming console where the storage costs nearly rival that of the entry-level console itself. The Xbox Series expansion card started at $199 for one terabyte, which was again $100 less than Microsoft's Xbox Series S console, with the two terabyte card even surpassing the price at $350. The only other catch to buying Frameworks SSD aside from shipping to Canada is that you're on your own to install the drive. Now, my writer Jackson upgraded his Steam Deck's SSD and found the process to be not that difficult. He managed to get his hands on a similar SSD to the one Frameworks will be selling, although his was only a one terabyte drive. He was able to pre-order the GPD WinMax 2 through the company's Indiegogo campaign. At the time, they were offering one terabyte 2230 SSDs as an add-on, so he was able to get a new drive, and then he followed iFixit's guide to SSD replacement. You'll find a link to that below. So what do you think about this? Are you going to be picking up a two terabyte drive for your Steam Deck? Let me know. 
All right, next up, February 14th was Free Software Day, a day where we celebrate the software that enables us to enjoy computing freedom. And fittingly, the KDE team announced their release of Plasma 5.27, and with it, a lot of welcome changes for new and old users alike. There's a lot, and I mean a lot, of things going on here in this long-term service release, but highlights include adding a welcome wizard, organizing settings better, and improving Wayland support. Now, I don't have time to cover all of the major changes here, but one that will significantly impact the Steam Deck are the new changes to the Discover Store. Now, the Discover Store is getting a redesign to better highlight popular apps. A more useful feature to me is one that's going to improve search functionality. We now have an all applications category in case you're not sure where your app may be categorized. But if you do a search in an app category and fail to find any results, you'll be asked if you want to search the entire app store. There have been several times where I was looking for an application in the Discover Store, but I couldn't remember, or honestly couldn't spell, the name of the app. And I would struggle in vain trying to remember or guess at the uh, category that the application belonged to. Now look, there's a huge amount of changes, uh, and we actually have a full article over on ViewSync if you're interested in checking that out. There's a link on screen and in the description. Now, as is tradition here, it's time to talk about the major changes to the Steam Deck software. This last week's update delivers a brand new stable Steam Deck client update with a host of new features and fixes. So let's talk about it. First, there's reduced startup time for users with tens of thousands of games in their library. It must be nice. The virtual keyboard in the overlay now remembers its last position. They added settings for initial location to show keyboard on desktop and in Steam overlay. They added fast jump by letter to the library, and they added several other fixes. Now in desktop mode, they reverted back to the old game info dialog that is accessible from the friends list. They added alt enter as a hotkey to exit big picture mode, and they fixed a whole host of other things with big picture mode. Now this has been another huge week for Steam Deck news, and as usual, things continue moving very quickly around here. Now if you're into the Steam Deck scene, make sure that you get subscribed to stay up to date with the latest here on the channel. My news site, ViewSync, also has a dedicated Steam Deck news section. Join for free and engage with the community over there. I want to thank my patrons and my YouTube members who make what I do here a reality. It's because of them that I've been able to grow this show into what it is today. So thank you. That's going to do it for now though. I appreciate you spending your time with me here today and I'll see you guys in the next one.